welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. This is going to be a true musing episode because as I am taping this, I am on my morning walk and I thought I'd just make this the episode. Here comes a car, so I'm going to get out of the way. (laughs) It's about, I think, 8 o'clock in the morning. I really don't know, but it's not hot nice and cool and there is not a cloud in the sky and the birds out here in this area are the only form of music I guess you could say the occasional car and I do mean occasional on these narrow but beautifully taken care of roads just looking at a a mouse right now or a house made out of purely light sandstone stone. One of the French windows is open, the blue shutters as well, and it's just simple and easy and quiet. And I have to share, so what was I doing yesterday? This kind of shocked me. Oh, I figured out how to watch a particular show on my computer that I've been wanting to watch for a while from the States. And I haven't been watching any television um, from the state since I've been here, and it's now into week. I'm in, I'll just be starting, I am in week three, I guess, right now, of being here. And the drama and the angst was overwhelming to me, more so than it has ever been. And I started to wonder why. And I really think it had a lot to do with the fact that I haven't been exposing myself to that kind of information and media for only just three weeks. And it made me think, hey, you really are probably taking in too much of that without even knowing it. Um, And it's become normalized. And so maybe there's another balance that you can create when you get back to the States. I think it's really easy to get into that mode of, ah, can you hear the rooster? There's a rooster. This is the next house. Um, But I think it's very easy to get into that mode. Oh, I have to check this as soon as I wake up, and I have to watch this show. And it's not a have to, like you're forced to, but you actually think you enjoy it, and you do to some extent. Listen. Come on, Mr. Rooster. Good morning. (laughs) He's probably going to go right as I start talking. Oh, and here's a vineyard, the tractor. But I do think even when we observe the drama that's on screen, whether it's scripted, there he goes again. See, as soon as I start talking, I love it. I love it. That we internalize that in a way that we think, oh, that's okay. To some degree, not literally what we're seeing, but to some degree. And so when there's something that's not going Um, cattywampus in our lives and there's something that doesn't have some kind of tinge of drama or a negativity to it when we've seen it so often around us whether in the news or in drama television or in the books we read we assume that it's around the corner Um, and I think that was something that just kind of oh there's a puppy there's another man's well mass excuse me I gotta get on the other side of the road hang on one second So as much as I love staying informed, and I think it's vitally important as a citizen and as a voter and as a community member, even if it's it's entertainment, I think there's an amount that can be edited or balanced or reassessed. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that. Moving on, what should we talk about next? So a few people have either left comments or sent me emails while I've been traveling. 
about traveling alone, and I am going to be doing a post um, coming up in the next few months about traveling alone. Um, I have actually written a three-part series back in 2012 about traveling alone, and I will put that on the show notes. But I want to go more in depth, um, and so I'll be writing a post about that coming up. But the thing about traveling alone is that I've, I've been reading the book. Actually, I just finished Stephanie Rosenblum's book, Alone Time, and I highly recommend um, reading. Even if you're not single, just choosing to travel on your own from time to time. Um, she herself um, was single for part of it and also had a, a part of her part of it. But for all four of her journeys, she was on choosing to travel on her own. I think there's a lot of gifts that we can give ourselves. But there are also moments of, I wouldn't say anxiety, but it's that nervousness, that doubt, that questioning, that because you're expending a lot of energy because um, you're planning it all on your own and you're having to rely on yourself to get from point A to point B and to make sure everything's in line and to make sure you see everything. And that expends a lot of energy. And when we expend a lot of energy, which is finite, to become more exhausted more quickly. And so it's a matter of monitoring that. Um, I myself on this trip, there have been times um, uh, that I have gotten to the point of, oh my gosh, is this going to work out? Oh my gosh, am I going to make it on time? Oh my gosh, am I going to be able to figure out how to navigate the railway system? Um, if a strike's going to strike and, and, and affect me, and then I'm going to have to rearrange it. Oh my gosh, I've spent so much time planning this. That's going to take more time. And uh, So I myself have gone through moments of that on this trip. So I don't want to make it sound like everything's been... Um, Woohoo! Bliss the whole time, as far as in my brain, um, it hasn't. But it has been for the majority of the time. And with each day, I feel very fortunate of how things are working out. So I'll be writing a post on that in August, more li most likely in August. And that's the other thing I want to talk about with August is that the third annual French Week will be Sunday, beginning Sunday, August twelfth, and wrapping up on Sunday, August. 19th. I'm so excited because I have so much content, uh, not only from this trip, but just other things I want to talk about and share that I'll really, you're going to get a lot of information. We at least do two posts a day during this week, um, French themed, obviously, in a variety of ways. But I'll also be sharing some of this that I'm learning and seeing and experiencing from this trip before that as well. So just stop by the blog from time to time. Oh my gosh, I just looked up and saw a row of cypress trees, all different heights, but all still making the skyline. So quiet out here today. And the blue flowers, okay, I gotta take a picture of the blue flowers. Hang on a second. So the majority of crops that I've been seeing in this area, it's been fun to just kind of see what the, the farmers are harvesting, or not, are not harvesting yet, but what they're growing. I'm just walking right by now a young cornfield. And I can hear in the background a farmer, I believe he's in an olive. Oh, there goes a huge bird. I think it's a hawk. I'm right now walking by a vineyard. And from where, whoop, there goes another car. And from where I'm on the road, I can see Meneb, um, the town that's kind of up on a hill here in the Luberon. Anyway, so I have a, a vineyard on my left, I have a cornfield on my right, and I'm about to walk by another field, and I think, all right, I still don't know what this uh, <laughs> crop is. <laughs> um, they're up a little higher, and I'm, I'm assuming it's some kind of fruit tree, and they're all propped up with stakes, and uh, not an olive tree. I might, no, I don't think it's an olive tree. That's not a fruit, obviously. But anyway, <laughs> so what I'd like to share with you now, um, a few days ago, or last, I think it was last Wednesday, I shared on Instagram that I am renting a car and driving. Um, and it's been very positive. Um, now, yesterday, which would have been Friday, was my first time driving on an auto route which would be equivalent to our freeways in the United States. And that was an entirely different experience. Um, even in England, when I drove, I didn't really drive on any of, of the equivalents. And so my Google Maps GPS handled it very well, and I got to exactly where I needed to go, which I was going to Aix-en-Provence. 
but <laughs> in my car, I immediately got on the auto route, A7 in fact, and I didn't see any speed signs. And I had been going, you know, 70, 80 miles or kilometers uh, per hour and the previous country roads at the, at the highest. And even then I probably wasn't going that fast because I was, you know, <laughs> checking things out. So I kept going and I go went a little faster. I was going 100 kilometers per hour and the cars just kept zooming by, zooming by. I'm thinking, yeah, I definitely do not know what the speed limit is, but I really don't feel comfortable going too much faster. The trucks, I was barely passing. Um, on the left. So it just made me smile and I just kept going. Well, then I came to the toll booth, went through that, which by the way is fascinating. So you have to figure out which lane you're in, which was actually pretty easy. Just look for the, the T and then the one, uh, and then you pick up your ticket and you go through. Getting to the other end of the toll booth, I'll talk about that in a second. That was just, it made me smile. Anyway, so I come out of the toll booth, the first part of it, and I see a sign that says, 130 kilometers per hour and I'm like holy Moses that's fast that's I looked that up later and it's 80 miles per hour yikes you can't even go that fast in the states at least in Oregon and and I'm in this small car um, and it's a great car it works well but I'm thinking yeah I don't think I'm gonna go that fast um, so I didn't but <laughs> It just made me smile because here I went from country roads to the zooming freeway. And the freeways are very much like America's. I mean, everyone is a, they're doing great. They know what they're doing. Passing's fine. It was a very safe trip. But um, it was definitely an experience. Um, and I very quickly got to my destination. But I get to end the auto route as far as the toll is considered. Two cars. Olive, olive trees to my left. Um, I get to where I pay my toll, which was about four and some um, euros. And it's this huge funnel system, and it just made me smile because you go into the the booth or where you're going to pay. Not booth. You don't get out of your car. You put your credit card in, and then this is there's like. I would say 10 to 15 rows of stalls where people are going to pay. And then you all come out of the chutes. It's like a, it reminds me of like a horse race. You come out of the chutes and you're all, there's no lanes as per se. There's nothing on the cement to tell you where to go. And then you all just sl somehow gradually funnel into three lanes. So out of 15 into three and it, to watch it above from a drone would be kind of interesting, but it's all just kind of like, okay, who's going to get there first? And it's not really a race per se, but it made me smile because it was civility as well as speed and everything worked really well. Okay, I just am an arm's reach away from a vineyard and I'm going to take some pictures. Uh, this vineyard is gorgeous. Anyway, back to the whole funneling thing. Again, just a, 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 an example in civility and decorum but also precision and it was just something that I thought worked very well and it was fun to participate it participate in it and have that firsthand experience but as much as I was exhausted from the driving just because it was all new and I was as far as the where I was going it went really well and I feel feel very fortunate um, and I will there was another car, family going on vacation. Um, I'll be writing a detailed post about renting cars when you're traveling in international countries or just different places, maybe even places that do um, speak the language you know best, but maybe some countries that don't. So um, that will be coming up in the next weeks and months or so. So stay tuned. I have a quick Intermission to introduce you to today's sponsor for the episode. Now, I'm not on my walk right now. I'm sitting in my salon. Furniture shopping is often a struggle. You want something that looks great and will last, but you don't want to spend $5,000 on a sofa. Plus, let's be real. You don't need bulky, oversized furniture that requires movers just to get it in the door, let alone up the stairs. The founder of Campaign felt exactly the same way. So he built a company made for people like us. 
Campaign makes sofas, chairs, love seats, and ottomans that are built to last. Everything they sell is made using quality materials like a steel frame that comes with a lifetime guarantee, and Campaign's furniture arrives in just a few days in a flat packed box so you don't have to schedule a delivery and wait around for it. Each piece is also made to assemble in just a few minutes, and you don't even need any tools to set it up. My favorite part is that they offer easy to remove covers so you can change the look of your home without having to buy a new sofa. It also means that if you have kids or you have dogs or get a new puppy um, or just have maybe um, maybe a little bit of messy guests that come over, they really enjoy their food. Let's just say it that way. I am one of those people, by the way. <laughs> you can wash the covers or easily replace them. So why not check out CampaignLiving.com to see the goods? And there's a special deal for the simple, sophisticated listeners. Save $75 off any sofa, loveseat, or chair when you use the code TSS at checkout. That's CampaignLiving.com, C-A-M-P-A-I-G-N, Living.com. And use the code TSS to save $75 off your order. So what else? I've been trying to really step into um, not just the the parts we hear about as tourists going to the markets and um, these beautiful destinations to tour and see, but I've also been trying to just see what everyday life might be like. Um, and so yesterday I went to one of the supermarkets, which is, I would say, very similar to a a big Walmart that had a grocery store and then things for the home, which was interesting in a good way as far as it was very similar. Um, the one thing that was different, I had picked up some produce, some lemons, and I get up to the grocery stand and the woman says, um, in English, she was very, very helpful, um, where's the sticker? Meaning, you know, the, the price per, 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 per weight. And I didn't, I, I didn't know. But anyway, you're supposed to weigh your produce in the produce section. The sticker prints off for you and you bring that up so they don't have to worry about that at checkout. Um, so that was just something I learned there. But that aspect was very much American as far as the, the market was concerned. Um, and thus, uh, we are very much like the French in that way. So equivalent, that's the one similarity that I noticed to say that. To say that it's American, I don't know about that. It's just that it's something that I saw first in America. And then I saw it again in France, and I thought it was interesting, the similarities there. So I'm standing um, in the shade for a moment on the road. It's already getting very warm. It's supposed to be in the low 90s today, Fahrenheit. Yesterday, I had the opportunity with regards to where I was going when I was driving. to go, I go into Aix-en-Provence, and um, I'm so glad I went. I originally didn't have it on my schedule, but uh, I was invited by Mary Lou Longworth, M.L. Longworth, who writes the Provençal. Uh, mystery series um, with Marin Bonnet and Antoine Verlac. Um, she was so very generous <laughs> and just met me and gave me a tour of the town. And I'll be doing a detailed post on that, but you can go to my Insta Instagram stories and the highlights of my France trip um, 2018 and see all that I saw. With some brief little snippets of history that I learned along the way. I honestly, my name for that town, just to give some context for situation, is uh, that this is, here comes a truck, hang on a second, is that Aix-en-Provence is the Paris of Provence. Um, and I say that just based on my limited knowledge is that it is a town that offers culturally a lot of the sim sim same things, obviously not everything, um, but it also offers some great restaurants and lots of wonderful food and markets. And then you have the infusion of the students um, that go to the university. Um, and then you have the sun. Um, it's fewer than 200,000 people, but it is the second most expensive city um, in France. Um, and it and it has surpassed the Côte d'Azur. I was wondering about that. It has surpassed that as far as prices. So it is becoming very popular. But I can see why. So a lot of you um, commented saying that, yes, you love it as well. You visited and, and enjoyed it. Um, but I definitely recommend putting it on your places to see if you're wondering where to go outside of Paris. Or maybe not go to Paris and go to Aix-en-Provence. 
um, and still have some great food. Um, that croissant I had was amazing. But anyway, I'll be doing a detailed post on that. It was a lovely experience in quite a lively city. Um, yeah, Kur, uh, Mar Kur Maribu, um, that main road strip that I was on, it has a bunch of the cafes and the fountains. Absolutely lovely. I mean, I just wish I would have had more time to be there. The shops, too, that I walked by. Oh, I should have packed two suitcases because I know I could have picked up some great finds. But um, I was being disciplined <laughs> and watching my budget. Anyway, so that was a lovely trip. So another musing that I've had lately is this idea of saying yes to invitations and opportunities that come up that you don't expect or, or you anticipate as a guest. And I'm always the front runner saying yes because it's something that you know you can do. Um, and all these guests <laughs> here is the question: What is the can part? Is it literal scheduling or is it you know more emotional and things like that? So. Case in point, um, I was invited by the owner of my rental to have an aperitif with him one evening, and I, I absolutely said yes. I mean, I'm right there in my home that I'm staying in. It's very comfortable. We had a lovely three-hour conversation about so many different things with the world and life and went through a bottle of rosé and had some great fugas and olives and pistachios. So yes, saying yes in that situation, I'm so glad I did. In another instance, a cup to join us, as you know, and, and France played Friday in the quarterfinals against Uruguay, and um, it's obviously a very big deal here. <laughs> France is doing very well. I'm not going to spoil anything by saying they won <laughs> two to zero, but um, it was recommended that I go to a cafe or a bistro or someplace, a bar or that has TV to watch it with the locals. Totally, totally agree. Would have been an amazing experience. But at that point in my journey, I was so exhausted. And I knew that having to figure out a place to park and then having to get there in, in time, and I would have not been able to truly enjoy myself. So it was a matter of monitoring myself knowing myself and not saying no because it wasn't a good idea, not saying no because I wasn't curious or um, adventurous. It was saying no because my traveling brain um, needed to recharge. And thankfully they won. And on Tuesday, tomorrow, um, with regards to the time that this um, episode is airing, Tuesday the 10th of July, France will be playing in the semifinals and I look forward to enjoying that game somewhere and uh, just being in the energy and the environment. Oh, I just saw a lavender field from where I'm standing. Um, anyway, so I think just to create absolute rules about how you should travel, I, I think anytime for the most part there's absolutes, it's never necessarily a helpful tool. There's always conditions and it, in this case, it's unique to the individual traveling and the circumstances and the other things that you have been able to do. Um, for example, that day that the game happened, I had just been in Aix-en-Provence. I had an amazing opportunity to be with Emma Longworth and I was reveling in that. And I, so it just it really depends on you. And so I don't think, I think often what happens is when we say no, sometimes we beat ourselves up and we impose self guilt and maybe other people impose the guilt too depends but and we shouldn't we know what we can do what we can't do we definitely want to try to be more courageous and curious because often we don't know what that experience is going to be and it could lead to a beautiful memory just as sitting down and getting to know someone um, in this case from Holland um, that I did with the aperitif and and the conversation so you just never know so that's why it is good to say yes so just some thoughts there, some musings, as we're calling it here today. And let's see. Oh, I'm watching a farm route in his field. I don't know what he's doing. It's a young, young field. It's really getting warm out here. What else? Oh my gosh, I just saw this bird, and it is blue with black tips on its wings. I did not kind of know what kind of bird that is, but it was beautiful. I think I'm going to turn around and go back. Oh. 
It's just beautiful here today, today, you guys, as it has been its entire week. Okay, last musing, a little more lighthearted, not that the other ones were not, but just more simple. It's a funny thing when you're traveling, and I know that my, my fellow travelers, which is everyone who listens to this, you guys have all traveled somewhere and you've learned something about yourself, about the world, about life. But in any instance, there was sometimes, there's always something sometimes you're craving that it's not that you want to be home, it's not that you're not enjoying your experience, but you're craving it. Oh, I just saw a really interesting little snail or something. Oh, those little shells. Oh, I don't know what those are. Anyway, random. Um, they, they would just make things feel a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> and in my case... I took a picture of it. I was going to post it on my Instagram, and I was like, no, it's silly. But I'll share with it here, share with it, share with you here what it was. So I neglected to pack Q-tips, Q-tips, and I forgot how simple of a thing it was, but also of, of regular of an activity it was to clean my ears. This is going to sound silly, but when I purchased the Q-tips at the, the, the supermarché the other day, I was so excited to get back to my my rental and use them oh my gosh that was such a luxury and so i think and again that's unique to me but there's always something ah i don't mean to use the word always there's often something that we use in our daily lives that brings us comfort and i think that's a lesson to us in our everyday lives that it doesn't have to be something grand or huge or expensive to make our days more pleasurable and offer more opportunity for joy. It can be something as simple as a Q-tip. It can be something as simple as leaving a note for your loved one or receiving a note from your loved one. Um, it could be something as simple as that hot cup of coffee or tea in the morning and where you sit and the view you get to enjoy. It could be as simple as giving yourself five or 10 more minutes to not rush. However that is, whenever it is in your day, the morning, the evening. But those simple little things that we add to our days, that we bring with us on our travels, in this case, I will forever be packing Q-tips. I've done it before, I don't know why I forgot. Can make a big difference without costing us a lot of money has no money at all. So I guess you could call that a petite plaisir. But I will share a petite plaisir for this week. That is not today's <laughs> petite plaisir, I promise. But I just thought, hmm, it's so true. And it was a good reminder of how our everydays really can be elevated with simple touches and thoughtful choices. All right, so that is today's episode, episode 216. But I do have a petite plaisir, so stay tuned. For the show notes of this episode, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 216. I mentioned a, a few different posts that I'll share, I would share with you, and those will be there. If you have any questions or curiosities, uh, I'm still here in France. I'm going to be here in France for a little bit longer. Um, when you're li- as you're listening to this episode, I'll be on my way to another destination. So follow on Instagram to see where I end up next. I'm excited about where I get to go next, as I've been excited this whole trip. I know I've been redundant, but um, thank you so much for listening, and I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. All right, welcome back. This week's Petit Plaisir is something that I briefly mentioned in our conversation today, but it's definitely something that... I probably have incorporated it some in some way um, in my lifestyle, and, and I'm assuming, and I have a feeling, and I have a feeling you have as well. I'm going to do it more consciously and to shift things up a bit to make things simpler. So it's the enjoying of an aperitif in nibbles. Instead of making appetizers, fancy appetizers, what I really enjoyed recently was um, fugas, which is... Um, bread that is uh, originated here in Provence. And I'll provide a few recipes that you can link 
to find online. But um, you can have fagas with olives, you can have fagas with cheese, you can have fagas with um, bacon, you can have fagas with anything, or you can just have fagas without anything, and just um, water, salt, and yeast. And um, it's just so good. That it's just a savory bread, not sweet. Um, but anyway, what I mean with this whole aperitif and nibbles is, by definition, aperitif is a drink enjoyed before the meal to stimulate the ap appetite. And so here in the summertime, it is rosé often, not always, but that's what my drink of choice has been. But the nibbles aren't things you have to go make. For example, I mentioned we had pistachios and olives, so olives are plentiful here, so it was fun to have those, as well as the bread fugas. But it doesn't have to be something you go sweat over in the kitchen. It's something very simple, something we had with Patricia Wells when we had a pear teeth with our wine were the slender breadsticks and hummus. Um, so good, so simple. We also had sometimes um, prosciutto or jambon or some kind of um, gourmet ham. Um, and uh, you could also have sausage or pate, things finely sliced and something you can just pick up with your fingers. Um, very laid back, very simple for the host and hostess. And it's just a way to ease into the meal. And I there was no cheese. There was no cheese, too. And I think that's what's interesting. That's definitely something that I'm going to switch. Um, I picked up a few small olive cutting boards to serve my cheese on. But I'm going to try to reserve my cheese for the course after the entree and before dessert, often paired with a simple tossed salad with vinaigrette. Um, so that I don't overeat, because um, I tend to enjoy the cheese a lot. And so if I put it before the meal, I tend to eat more of it. And if I eat it after my entree, I found this past week or the week before with Patricia Wells, is that I savor it, slow down, don't eat as much. And I also know that dessert is coming, and so I'm saving room for that. So just an idea for a simple pleasure, petit plaisir, is to add the aperitif and a little bit of nibbles to your next dinner party or meal for yourself and your love and your, or just yourself. I've done it for myself many, many times. Um, not sweating over a big fancy appetizer, but instead just finding really good seasonal eats that pair well with the drink of choice. I hope you've enjoyed today's Petit Plaisir and um, I look forward to sharing with you another one next week. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I am heading back on my walk back to my rental. Um, if you'd like to visit the show notes for some ideas and links, visit the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 216. Have a beautiful week, and thank you so much for joining me on my journey. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pre-order Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, which will be released on November 13th, 2018. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is now available in paperback, as well as ebook and audio version on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon, or wherever ebook and audiobooks are sold. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog post, and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.